Selective Dissonance is interested in helping you experience horror from a different perspective. Looking at horror through the societal lens of marginalized communities, we hope to give you original scares birthed from everyday experiences that may be sources of fear for individuals within those communities. The moments where one passing interaction with a neighbor or seemingly innocuous camping trip can change your life insurmountably. The stories you will hear are all fiction, but that doesn't mean that there isn't a version of this anxiety and trepidation plaguing someone's stream of consciousness at this very moment. Are you ready? Let's begin. Hey birdies, it's me, Alex, and welcome back. So this week I'm going to be hopping back on my series on how to stay safe as a trans teen. I'll be talking about, like, um, a really personal set of experiences that I had when I was around 14 or 15 and just coming out. I'm talking about this because if it happened to me, I'm sure it happened to others, and I'm sure it will happen to others. And if I can stop that for someone, then I have a responsibility to, you know? So, I just want to throw in some trigger warnings right here at the top. Um, I guess trigger warnings for grooming behaviors from an adult, possible trigger warnings just for general trauma and body dysphoria, and trans gummy attitudes of me when I was way younger. The last little bit of housekeeping is this video is sponsored by Sugar. Sugar is a free browser add-on available on Google, Firefox, and Safari. If it's a browser, it has Sugar. All you have to do is when you're checking out, click that little yellow button and it will scan the entire internet and find discount codes for you, finding you the best deals for the least effort. Try Sugar today and use my code ALEXWITHWINGS01 for an extra discount on your first purchase through Sugar. Hi birdies, it's Alex. I'm the man I am today because of that. Thank you for watching this video. So, I think I've talked about it before, but I come from a poorer background than a lot of people. And that's whatever, it's neither here nor there, and it's fine now that I've grown up. I've grown past that, and I'm the man I am today because of that. You know? But... When I was first coming out, it was hard. I didn't have the money to pay for the therapy or the hormones or the surgery. That just wasn't possible. And that was real hard to deal with and come to terms with. I know I'm not alone in this, but I was desperate. <laughs> to be honest, I would have done whatever it took to get anything to help me. I I did everything. I started a GoFundMe. I got two jobs as soon as I could. I did everything right, and I watched trans people like me, my age, coming out and getting hormones or puberty blockers or surgeries, and even people fucking younger than me. And that broke my heart, because why not me? I tried harder than any of them. I deserved it more. I wasn't a faker. I was trans. I was doing everything. I was doing all of the work and putting in all of the effort, so why couldn't it be me? Don't get me wrong, I know that's kind of fucked up, but honestly, that was the peak transcom versus too cute discourse, and... I was so sure one was right, and that meant I thought I deserved it more. Anyway, a local organization got a hold of my story. They thought it was so heroic for a little 14-year-old trans boy to be trying so hard to get anything he needed to feel okay. That's it. I just wanted to feel okay, you know? 
And this org really helped local trans people through grants and community support. They did and still do a lot of good. I will be linking them below if you would like to donate to them to help trans people with the legal fees associated with transitioning. It was the spring of 2012. The organization was throwing its yearly fundraiser and as their pity project of the year, I was invited. Before we go on, I think we need to clear something up. If you haven't heard of Charles Applewhite before, here's a quick, I guess, description. Charles Applewhite is a 75 year old, now, businessman and charity runner and a well-known philanthropist. He's best known for his work in activism for civil rights and his large donations to things such as the Connor Project. But what I know him for is for grooming children. And I was one of them. I wore my first binder. I remember it was the first because I can't wear that binder anymore. Well, I couldn't wear that binder anymore. Not after everything that happened the next couple years. It just... It hurt too much to look at. But... Anyway. I saved up for two months. Just to buy that stupid GC2B binder. And when I tell you, I felt like hot shit. Walking out in this fancy gala in my $10 Goodwill suit. That was two sizes too big for me and didn't match my tie. I'm not lying to you. Seeing all of these adults in their nice clothes, sipping champagne and talking about how, oh, you donate to this charity? Well, I donate to a charity that supports orphaned orangutans. Or, hey, you're funding the new Tesla? Well, I'm actually starting my own company as a competitor. Yes, <clears throat> The goal is to make a car that runs on water and diet soda. You know, so we can all be thin and sexy and save the environment. And seeing them look at me and hearing them say, Hey, it's Alex. Have you heard about him? It felt amazing hearing them say my name and use my pronouns. It felt incredible. As the night went on, there were keynote speakers, there was food, music. I'm gonna be honest, I was 14. I didn't pay attention to the speakers at all. <laughs> I mean, who does anyway? Defo not a 14-year-old, obviously. That is, until he walked out on stage. Charles Applewhite. At that point, anyone who's anyone knew who Charles Applewhite was, you know? And obviously, since I was the special guest of honor for the organization, they made sure to tell me all about him. Charles Applewhite will be there. If we get lucky, he'll make a huge donation. And maybe enough for you to get a name change or a grant for surgery. After his keynote, I was ecstatic. He was incredible. He talked about wanting to support our youth, people of color, and most importantly to me, the trans community. I know now that he's a white savior complex piece of shit, but to a 14 year old, he sounded like an angel. I honestly rushed to meet him and take photos after his speech. He was honored, of course. It was a good photo op for him. Anyway, he kind of took me under his wing. It looked good to the press. A rich man taking time out of his day to support a poor, miserable trans kid? The newspapers eat that shit up. And of course he said stuff like, I'll pay off this doctor's visit. Or, I'll help your mom with rent. She deserves a break. And he would... He did it. It's not like he lied. So, of course, he was basically my hero. But the other stuff, him always standing just 
a little too close to me. The weird requests. Not weird like you're thinking kind of way. And like, I know what you're thinking. It started with small stuff. Like, I'll give you 20 bucks to go pick up my laundry. Or, hey, I gave you $100 to spend when I take you out to lunch. Or whatever. You know, normal, easy stuff. That, yeah, okay, I'm a 14-year-old who doesn't know any better. This makes sense for a 70-year-old adult to do. Even if it didn't really make sense. You know? Plus, let's be honest. It's good press. This super rich man who has the money to spare, helping a little trans kid in need get the funds to help him transition. But instead of just giving him the money, having him work for it so that he has a sense of purpose. This story sounds great, doesn't it? I get that. And I see that from the outside, they probably found it charming and heartwarming it's sweet it was like that for months just normal secretary stuff i guess i just did things and got paid small amounts of money and you know my mom was happy to have me getting out of the house i could see it took some of the pressure off her as a single parent i know it's expensive and hard to raise a kid alone So, I could see how at the beginning, no one was like, Hey, this is fucking weird. (laughs) From the outside, everything probably looked amazing. But it didn't stay that way. It didn't change overnight or anything. It's not like one night he said, Hey, can you pick up my laundry from the dry cleaner? And the next night, he was like, Hey, come hang out in my sex dungeon. You know, it wasn't... It wasn't that extreme. It was so much more subtle, which somehow makes it worse, I guess. It started with small things. Like, oh, well, take some selfies with me every time you do things. Or... Send me a picture of you and your friends hanging out. You know, little, little innocuous things. Like, oh, of course we're taking selfies. Because it looks good on social media. Yeah, that makes sense. Then it kept getting bigger. It wasn't just the tasks getting bigger. He started helping my mom out so she could take more time off work. She wasn't working 80 hours a week anymore. She only had to work 40. Because if she needed a little extra money for something, he could cover rent because he's such a kind man. He's such a hero. He has such a kind heart. But that's just... That's not the truth. Charles Applewhite is a predator. He took my vulnerability and he exploited it. The way people groom you is scary. It's slow. It's calm. It's quiet. It takes so much time, and it is so sneaky, and it's so, so fucking easy to fall for when you're just a kid. And let's be honest, I was just a kid when he started. By the time I was 15, he started isolating me. You need to work this weekend. I started getting taken to big conferences, meetings, family vacations. 
but somehow people canceled last minute every time. It would be just us on these vacations, on trips. The meetings would be just me and him in his office and the other people on the phone. But the conferences were different. At the conferences, I got ignored, pushed to the side, while simultaneously being shown off to the public, like, oh, look, here's my exotic pet. He is transgender. I wasn't supposed to talk to anyone during them, so that I didn't ruin his reputation. He told me to be quiet and smile so I could learn the business. I didn't get to just be a teen. I was just alone a lot, you know? All of the trips took time out of my weekends, out of the summer. Honestly, I started not even talking to my friends. I didn't even have time to talk to my mom much. Charles was my lifeline. He was my constant. And the only thing that was always there for me. He supported me. Taught me. And... Honestly, I thought of him as something between a father figure and a literal saint. Maybe that's why I didn't blink when he suggested to my mom that I spend the night at his house when we got in late from trips or conferences. Maybe that's why I wasn't worried when he started to push me to dress certain ways or when he started touching my shoulders when we were taking photos. Or sitting just a little too close in the car. The first time I actually felt weird was when he encouraged me to drink at a hotel. He said, it's just champagne, it's fine. And he hadn't lied to me before. I, I don't know what happened that night. I don't want to know anymore. I do know that I woke up alone the next morning. I was still so confused. It was like every... Everything had a th thick fog over it, and everything hurt. That was the first time something like that happened. I didn't catch on fast enough. I just thought that's what drinking did. You wake up the next morning in pain confused with no memories. I know now that's not true. <laughs> One night, whatever he was using didn't work. And I think he knew. Because that night, we don't, we don't need to talk about it, okay? I'm sorry, but I'm not ready yet. I don't know if I'll ever be ready. Just... I left. I was in a strange city, and I left. I walked out, took my stuff, and I found my own way home. And I'm going to stop there. That's it.
that's what you need to know for now. Maybe someday I'll come back to this story, but for now, I need more time to grow and heal. <laughs> Guys, I made this video because I know I'm not the only one. I know there are more people out there with stories just like mine. Because some have come to me. And it's time we're heard. I know the story was, uh, rough, but this kind of thing happens, and it's important that as a community, we confront what can happen to those of us who are most vulnerable. And a lot of the time, that's kids who just want to feel like themselves. Thanks for sticking through this one with me. We'll be back again next week. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more, probably happier content. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Patreon under AlexWithWings98 on all. And comment down below if you have experienced anything similar. Resources for abuse recovery, talking to trusted adults, and how to spot red flags are linked down in the description. And until next time, fly high y'all. Together we can build a safer and stronger future. Hi birdies, it's Alex. I'm the man I am today because of that. Thank you for watching this video. From all of us on the Dissonance team, we thank you for listening. Don't forget to join us the second Sunday of each month for all new scares. Today's episode, Alex with Wings, was written and performed by Lee Silwa. Our amazing intro and outro was composed by Morific. Some rights reserved unless otherwise stated. Selective dissonance can be found almost anywhere you listen to podcasts and on social media at Selected Harmony, and you can email us at selectivedissonance at gmail.com. Can you hear us? Excellent.